You want people to be excited about the problems facing our planet, but we have national borders, we have politics. How do you get people to think about holistic solutions? Something I talk about in my work is uh, how do we develop a planetary scale mindset? Because challenges like climate change affect us all globally. Uh, the climate and these big kind of global patterns, they don't really respect national boundaries. The things I really focus on actually are two big trends. One is population growth. We're at 7.7 .7 billion people today. We're roughly gonna go to 10 billion by 2050. A lot of that development is gonna be in the developing world. And how are we gonna meet their needs, that's one trend, in the context of the second trend, and that's climate change. Right now, our system of incentivizing does not produce that planetary outlook. Yeah, I think in general it's tough. Um, uh, you know, there's different governments around the world, different municipal governments trying to get things right. It's all about protecting your own turf. The paradigm has to shift from that kind of thing to more very simple goal setting exercises and really local moonshots. The local governments can provide more and more contracts available for innovators, for entrepreneurs to stimulate more involvement in that economy. And this also applies to human health, by the way, human, like new diagnostics new therapies, how can we take the most interesting, impactful, cutting edge technologies from the advanced technological centers on Earth, like Silicon Valley, or China, or Europe, or other places, and accelerate their diffusion into the parts of the world that actually might need the most, like the developing world. But with patent protection, the whole point is to keep your prices high so you can incentivize scientists. Sure, you know, a small startup company says, we have investors, we've put a lot into this, we don't want to just sell our thing for a penny, but actually, if you sell a billion of them for a penny, it starts to get interesting. But they need that kind of commitment, right? And that's very much a negotiation that can happen. But I think with scale, you can actually start achieving uh, this win-win approach, accelerating solutions in the market, but also giving the, uh, the startup uh, firms the return that they need to just justify things for their investors. And how do you balance out the responsibility among the developed and developing nations? The developing nations may have very fragile economies. One hurricane could wipe out half of the economy. Here's what I love about renewable energy, for example, to answer your question. It's win -win. It becomes local energy, right? Now, of course, a developing nation, they may need financial uh, support to put in uh, enough uh, photovoltaic power or even hydropower or wind power. But once they have that infrastructure in their nation, that becomes local energy. You can't take the wind from that country, you can't take the sun. When you can have more and more of the world uh, doing these upfront investments in resilient architectures, like those for energy, renewable energy, for example, then for the long term, they have a local source that can't be removed. And do you think we need to choose or balance between comfortable modern lifestyles and being eco-responsible? I focus really on four things now when I think about this for, for people around the world, whether it's developing or uh, developed. It's very much the relationship between food, agriculture, energy and water, and human health. And this is what I really think about planetary priorities, you know, moonshot goals, because these aren't solved yet by any stretch. 